Break out your banjos, but take it easy on that moonshine. For today, we're talking Tennessee. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's Wednesday sponsor is FanDuel. Right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Head on over to FanDuel.com in order to get started. Happy Wednesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, we're talking Tennessee. We're going to dive into some offense today, some defense a little bit later. We're going to finish with our Locked On Look of the Week. It's back here in 2024. Very excited about the return of that. But we have a very big game this weekend against a very highly touted opponent, the Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee is led by their head coach, Josh Heupel. He's in his fourth season at Tennessee. He has very quickly brought Tennessee back to national prominence and he's become beloved for doing so. Josh Heupel is known for extremely electric offensive teams. That's exactly where we're going to start here on Wednesday. I'm going to go ahead and say something extremely controversial, so bear with me. Iamaliava. That's how you say it. Nico Iamaliava is the quarterback. (laughs) He's a redshirt freshman who sat behind Joe Milton last year for the Volunteers. A lot of Tennessee fans wanted Iamaliava to go ahead and take over last year. Did not get their wish. Milton was the quarterback. But now it is Nico's time. Nico was the number one 2023 quarterback in the country, and he's basically a creative player back there at quarterback. He's six foot five, six foot six, excellent arm strength, excellent field vision, excellent decision maker, very good runner, very good speed, just a pure nightmare to try and game plan for. The only thing he doesn't have a whole lot of is in game experience. He's only started two games as the starting quarterback. But that does not seem to slow him down at all. He went crazy in week one against Chattanooga. Only played one half of football to do it. He was 22 of 28 for 314 yards and three touchdowns. Kenton, this kid's a headache. That is an understatement. That young man is nightmare fuel for defensive coordinators. And I don't say that lightly. Um, He can do a little bit of everything on the field. And like you said, the only thing is you're, you're talking about, hey, does he have the experience to quickly... Um, diagnose things and all that type of stuff. But the reality with with uh, Nico is this. He is the perfect fit for Hypo System. Yes. Hypo System encourages deep shots. It encourages use your arm strength. It encourages, I'm going to trust you to make throws that 10 guys in the country can make. I believe I got one of the 10 on my roster. That's That's what that offense does. It sends those receivers deep all the time. All the time. But more so than that, it counts on your fear of those receivers going deep to get the running game goal. Because w- once you get too much fear, once you're saying, all right, cover four, everybody, get back, get back, get back. Once you get in that mode, all of a sudden you find it really tough to get your run fits proper. All of a sudden you find it really tough to have run support from your defensive backfield, which objectively speaking, more often than not, at least one of your defensive backs is going to have to be a part of run fits. But because you're so scared of these quarterbacks with big arms and these very speedy receivers like Brew McCoy and company, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Whatever we do, we cannot allow these guys to get behind us. Whatever we do, we've got to keep everything in front of us. Next thing you know, uh, you're you're sitting up here looking around saying, man, um, did they just rush for a buck 50 in this half? man, did did we just really let their quarterback get loose and scramble like that? And it's because, again, guys like Thornton, guys like McCoy, guys like that, they keep you on your toes. They keep you worried about they're going to be this deep because their receivers can absolutely fly. And so you combine receivers that can fly with quarterbacks with huge arms, with an aggressive coach, and all of a sudden you create a perfect storm for a lot of explosives via the pass or via the run because, again, you're everybody's backing off. Everybody's playing soft coverage and those soft shell coverages leave lots of room in the running game to be had. They come right out the gate. They try and hit you in the mouth and then they continue to hit you in the mouth 
until you submit later on in the game. And one of the scarier things about Nico is he's a surgeon back there in the pocket. He can run if things get dicey, but if he doesn't need to, he'll sit back there and pick you apart all day long. That's exactly what you saw against Chattanooga, which, you know, that's to be expected, but he can do it against anyone because he has that type of talent. You mentioned their pass catchers. Dante Thornton Jr. had a massive game last week. Brew McCoy, you can't forget about him. Chris Brazel was another name to watch there at wide receiver. You certainly cannot forget about Squirrel White. He has elite speed, typically coming out of the slot position. Holden Staves is a Tennessee tight end. That's a name I hope I'd never hear again. He tore us up last year when he was a part of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Those are just the pass catch. I haven't even talked about their backfield. They have Dylan Sampson, who's shifty, he's strong, he's explosive, and he is that third dimension to this extremely explosive Josh Heupel offense. So as if we didn't already have our hands full with Nico, you have to deal with explosive pass catchers, an explosive running back, and a head coach that loves explosive play calling. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is this. Like I said, teams are so afraid of it. you. You're stuck in sort of this Chinese finger trap, right? Because you are you have to do one thing. If you say, we're going to press up, and we're not going to be afraid of these guys. Beat you over the top. So then you put the other finger in the trap and say, okay, we'll get deep and we won't let them. We'll keep everything in front of us. And then their running backs get loose. And then you have to add in somebody to the box and then you're getting beat over. And it's it's the constant, like, what do we do to beat this offense? And the, the key that we have seen from other teams, I mean, obviously, Nico I and Joe Milton, two entirely different guys. But the, the key that we've seen to beat this team Get pressure on the QB yep. and keep everything in front of you. If you can do those two things, which it's it's simple, but it's not easy, right? There are lots of things in life that are simple, but they're not easy. Telling a person that's that's packed on some pounds, hey, burn more calories than you eat. It's simple. It's not necessarily easy. Same thing with this in terms of you have to keep these guys in front of you. You have to pressure the quarterback. You have to do them simultaneously. That Those are things that you can't – you can keep everybody in front of you all day long. At some point in time, if you don't get home, nobody can keep up with these receivers for six, seven seconds during a play. It's just not going to happen. So, you know, you, you look at this situation, and again, Coach Gibson has his work cut out for him. But I kid you not, I mean this from the most genuine standpoint possible. If Tony Gibson can hold this offense here, to 21 points or less. I demand that he be named co-head coach <laughs> and that instead of the, the turnaway bone, we get him a turnaway scepter and a crown, which the players don't get to use. He gets to hold up whenever his defense uh, gets a turnover and, and we play the, the British national anthem or something because that man must be of noble blood to have such an amazing to have such an amazing performance against this team, if they can do that. And that's a massive if, by the way. That is not a small if in terms of, oh, yeah, anybody can hold these guys to 21 or less. It's been done so many times before. It hasn't. It, it objectively hasn't. And, again, I'm talking about back with the Joe Milton offense when they were, you know, not necessarily as good um, as they are now. But the teams that held them under 21 were the number one ranked team in the nation, Georgia number 14 ranked team in the nation, Missouri, number 11 team in the nation who went on to play in the college football playoff, Alabama and Florida. Those are the only teams that kept them under uh, 21 last year. So if you can hold them there, Coach Gibson, you're the guy, you're the man, you're the everything, you're the apple of my eye, you're the wind beneath my wings because, you know, you're the defensive coordinator of my dreams, so you can do that. If Tony Gibson holds Tennessee under 21 points, I think you give him coordinator of the year on the spot. It would be yes. that type of heroic effort. And yes. it's often been said that the 335 defense is meant to match up well with a veer and shoot offense. Right. NC State's going to have to prove it in every sense of the imagination. And more specifically, the NC State linebackers, they are the most important group on the field for NC State in this game because – if you are able to get pressure on Nico and he has to escape the pocket, if the linebackers cannot contain him, nightmare scenario. It also works the other way. If the linebackers are too passive and Nico has additional time to create, extend a play, and then make more magic happen, nightmare scenario. You get what I'm getting at here. It's a very oh, tall order 
for the linebackers to have to step up and answer the bell here. You talked about that pressure. If NC State cannot create pressure on Nico, I don't see how we win this game because it is that imperative that you force him into bad decisions, control the turnover margin. If you can't do that, I don't know how much of a shot we truly have. Coming up next, we're going to dive into the Tennessee defense and what to expect on that side of the ball. This comes after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's the formula for winning championships. But it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, and exhaust kits to LED headlights and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Middle portion of our Wednesday show, now switching gears over to the Tennessee defense. The defensive line is the story here. Of course, they're headlined by James Pierce, who is widely considered one of the top defensive ends in the entire country, very likely to be a high draft pick in the upcoming NFL draft. Bryson Easton's a senior. Omari Thomas is a senior. Dominic Bailey's a senior. They are a senior-led line who's extremely talented, extremely big, extremely fast, extremely strong, one of the better units in the entire country. The NC State offensive line has their hands full, literally, with a very tough unit to beat. Oh, absolutely. Make no bones about it. That is a group that is very talented. I talked about them losing one of their top side guys last year, but when you have as much talent as they do, it's like, oh, no, it's so unfortunate. We lost one of seven guys who could get to the quarterback at a high clip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. It's so unfortunate. Did we lose the one who's going to be in the green room for about three minutes before his name is called? No? All right, then. We're good here. Uh, no, but seriously, this this group is the story by a mile for a reason. For a reason. Like, don't get me wrong. Fantastic. Fanta- and I've, I've said this a thousand times, and I'll say it a thousand more. If you get behind the sticks against Tennessee, you have a long day. Yeah. You have a long day. There are very few teams that I would say have a speed package that's like close to rivaling theirs. And honestly, one of those teams, their speed package looked very veckless down in Nashville last week. <laughs> anyway, so with that being said, um, yeah, they they have, you know, one of the best groups when they can just throw guys in there that are specifically in the pass rush. Oof, it reminds me of the old Indianapolis Colts when they went NASCAR package and there was uh, there was Dwight Freeney, Robert Mathis, and they put two other DNs whose names I can't quite remember on the field all at once. And they were just flying. It was Tennessee can do that. The key to negating that, however, is the fact that the linebackers and DBs are not at the same caliber of this defensive line. They are not. With all due respect to this team, their defensive back play has been suspect at best for quite some time. And I know, you know the guys have gotten older. Oh, we've, we've made additions. In the words of one Sean Carter, you can try to change, but that's just the top layer. Homie, you was who you was when you got here. And so we're going to get into it later. But if you can make good decisions, if we can get the Grayson McCall that we believe we got, this offense should be fine. This offense should be fine. I'm not going to say, I know we can run a ball against Bailey and company. I'm not going to tell you that. Line. But in terms of, hey, could you see Grace McCall going for 350, something like that, against this team? Yes. I could absolutely see that happening. I could absolutely see. People forget, we have a guy that tore them up last year on a Connecticut team that uh, <clears throat> there wasn't uh, – a ton of offensive firepower outside of them. Is the Bugatti in the carport? It was the Bugatti in the cop carport. Okay, it was hiding the Hellcat in the middle of the hood. That's what just that's what happened there. So uh, you're you're objectively looking at a situation where you know 
they are going to have problems in the secondary if you can stop that pressure from getting in early. If you can make it so that this is a bad game for Belton and Peak, Big Anthony Belton. Buddy, I'm telling you right now, if you can if you can win in this game, not just hold your own. If you can be a stalwart in this game, um, in the words of Nas, whose world is this? The world is yours. <laughs> it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Who, the world is yours, young man. You will be one of the first three tackles off the board. And Jacarius Pete, listen, big fans of your work. We're big fans here. Okay. I believe one of the biggest improvements in our run game last year was adding him to the starting lineup. Yep. If you can make it happen in this game, Play the boss man D-Lo because he's going to be Mr. Too Slippery at the combine. Yeah, you talk about Anthony Belton. We've often said that this is a bag year for him. This is one of the biggest bag games inside of that bag year. Arguably the toughest test he'll face all season. More than likely he's going to see a whole lot of James Pierce in this game. If yeah. you can protect Grayson McCall and give him a pocket, that's the only shot that NC State is going to have in order to hurt that Tennessee secondary that I'll touch on in just a second. Another thing about the Tennessee defensive line is not only is the Tennessee defensive line extremely talented, they're also deep. In that Chattanooga game, they ran basically their entire roster out there, and they were still producing. I know Joshua Josephs had a really nice game. Elijah Simmons got plugged in there. Tyree West, the list goes on. They have dudes up front, and they will eat you alive if you are not prepared for it. So this offensive line, all the gripes that we had coming out of our week one game against Western, This is a whole different beast and a whole different animal. Shout out Kobe Bryant. This has to be your best effort, likely of the entire season. It's probably this one and then Clemson. Shocker, the two biggest teams that we play all year. But I say all that to say, this game will be won or lost more than likely up front for NC State's offensive line. If you can't protect McCall, I don't know what else to tell you because Tennessee is just going to eat you up snap after snap after snap. It'll be a long game. Now, talking about that Tennessee secondary, that is what NC State has to find a way to exploit. The Tennessee secondary is pretty inexperienced. I've I've come to understand that the majority of their starters are starting for the first time here in 2024. You have to use that inexperience to your advantage. That's where Casey Concepcion, Justin Jolie, Wesley Grimes, Noah Rogers, Dakari Collins, you got to turn those boys loose. You have to find a way to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers if you want a shot at this one. And I'll tell you another one. Sorry to cut you off, Grayson, but I'll tell you another one who could play play big here. Tight ends appear to be this team's Achilles heel in terms of covering. I want to see some juice marine in there. Give me some juice in there. Give me some 21 person. Give me some 12 personnel in there, and and let's see what we can get done. Because, I, again, I want to see. Don't leave anything in the chamber after this game. If you've got a single play, a single call, a single, hey, this is money. I know it's going to work when I call it. That you left behind, that you left in Charlotte. Damn it, that's coaching malpractice in my book. This is a defense that it will be ready to play once you put the ball down on Saturday. So, And not just the offensive line. I shouldn't be so heavy on them. Grayson McCall himself has to play better as well. We talked about his struggles. He's got to take his play up a couple notches. You can't afford to miss wide open throws time after time in this one. Because Tennessee is going to punish you if you do. So getting effective push up front from the O-line to get to spring Jordan Waters loose, just another piece. You're going to have to fire on all cylinders. Bottom line is it's going to take probably one of the best efforts of NC State's offense that you might see all year. It will take nearly a perfect game to beat Tennessee on defense. I'm, I'm quite serious about that. So the task is there. The opportunity is there. The nation is doubting you. How will NC State's offense respond to the challenge? of a very daunting Tennessee defense. We're going to have to find out on Saturday. And coming up next to finish out our Wednesday show, the long-awaited return of the Locked On Look of the Week for the first time here in 2024. Stick with us after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, but that's because it's America's number one sports book. Right now, we have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account, a current form of payment, and if you choose, 
you can cancel at any time. Head on over to FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Last couple minutes of our Wednesday show. You've all been waiting to hear it. We've been waiting to say it. It's now time for our Locked On Look of the Week for the first time here in 2024. Kenton, let's fire it up. On this play, we're going to look at the interception. And I know some people are going to say, oh, my God, you're being too critical, and yada, 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 so on and so forth. Well, long story short, the reason that we're showing this play is because we're showing a moment in which your senior leader has to be a senior leader. And I disagree with Grayson, and that Grayson believes that the offense will be have to be darn near perfect to get to, to make Tennessee's defense be plotted. I strongly disagree. I think the defense is clearly uh, behind the offense. It always has been and most likely always will be at Tennessee. Uh, but with that being said, I you cannot make compounding mistakes as a senior and, and think that everything is okay here. So we're going to start off with the pre-snap read here, okay? As a quarterback, the first thing that quarterbacks always look at, how many safeties do you have? Now, why is that important? Because how many safeties there are will generally tell you the coverage. At the college level, teams are not very good at disguising their coverage, especially when they believe that they have um, inferior talent, per se, to their opponent. What does that mean? You can't disguise coverages because normally that means somebody has a stretch assignment. That means somebody has to go from like, oh, we fake like it was cover three, but it's really cover two. So what does that mean? Somebody has to go from looking like, they're covering um, a a deep out or an, an out route or the uh, that zone to covering a deep half. That is not easy. It sounds easy in theory. In practice, it is not. And you have to do that while assuring that, hey, I can account for all of the ground that I would otherwise. So with that being said, here's a fun fact about coverages and safeties. Generally, however many safeties you see, if it's even or odd, it'll tell you whether or not the coverage is even or odd. What do I mean by that? If you see one high safety, it is either cover one or cover three a vast majority of the time. If you see two high safeties, it is two, four, or six. Cover six is a hybrid of cover two and cover four. One side plays cover four, one side plays cover two. Now, in this moment, what we see here is cover six from Western Carolina. The corner and the crazy part about this is they're aligned exactly how teams run cover six. The wide side corner pressed up deep fourth, which most often turns into man on man one up with the outside receiver. The slot corner is playing off because he has that curl out area to where if that if number um if number two on you count from the outside in. So the first receiver is number one, second receiver is number two, third receiver is number three. If number two sits down, he needs to be there. If number two breaks out, he needs to be there. If number two breaks in, he passes him off to the linebacker who is inside of KC um, at about the 45 or at about the uh, 40 yard line on the nose at the moment. So the corner at the top of the screen has a deep fourth. And this safety that's about in the middle of the field has a deep fourth. And the safety at the bottom of the screen has a deep half. Because what they're doing is they're saying, we're going to beat you in a numbers game. We have four defenders up here for three receivers. We have three defenders down here for two possible receivers if this back decides to release out of the backfield. With that being said, the defensive line isn't doing anything special it's technically a blitz because a linebacker is removed from the line of scrimmage and coming, but it's a four man rush. We should have been able to pick this up much better than we did. I'm sure they'll get that cleaned up. Now, the concept that the offense went with is the stick concept. The stick concept, you have two outs and a go. Number one runs a go. Number two either runs a route, either runs a guaranteed out route at the same depth or deeper than number three who is on the inside so what we're looking at here wesley grimes is number one justin jolie is number two kevin concepcion is number three now the the reality is concepcion is the key read here so when kc runs this route he can do one of two things he can 
if it is man, if he realizes somebody is checking me, man, you keep running. You run away from the man to the sideline. That's what you do there. But if it is zone, you do what people like to call in the game, sitting down. Sit down in a soft spot or hole of the zone. So Wesley Grimes runs off the outside corner, number one. Justin Jolie runs out the outside corner or the uh, corner that is um, the furthest inside to the top of the screen. And then KC sits down because, again, that linebacker is not going to check him man to man. If he does, KC keeps running to the sideline. If that linebacker is in a zone, he cannot immediately abandon to run with KC because there is an old rule in coverage. When three goes away, two may be coming to play. So if he were to, if Casey were to run an out route and he immediately bails and follows Casey regardless, that's easy for offensive coordinators to say, hmm, I know just the answer to that equation. So naturally he has to kind of slow play it and he'll always be a little bit behind it. This is what the look is supposed to be basically uh, pan out here. The curl out player is taken by Jolie, the deep fourth player taken by Grimes, and KC is supposed to beat this linebacker to the spot and still sit it down just in case that curl out player is feeling a little frisky. If he's feeling a little froggy and he wants to leap, you got to sit down right there to prevent him from having an opportunity to come to that ball because if he sits and jumps, that means Jolie is going to be wide open because that deep fourth guy is going to be way out of the picture with Grimes because he's normally in bail technique there. Now, the play has snapped. For whatever reason, our offensive line forgets to pick up this linebacker who's coming. However, this is such a quick game throw, it doesn't even matter that there was a blown assignment on the offensive line. What we are looking at, KC is already in good position. He has leverage on this linebacker. He's going to where he needs to go. However, Grayson, look at that corner that's circled up at the top. Look at his posture. What do you notice about his posture? He's already making a break on the ball. He's already making a break on the ball. But Grayson, what is Justin Jolie supposed to be doing? If he ran a hit, he'd be a dangerous man. Well, the point is, he's supposed to run an out because if that corner is feeling frisky, if he feels froggy, the quarterback's read is, ah, you took the cheese. You took the underneath guy. You know, you you, you got to turn into an evil villain that's telling, or yeah, the evil villain that's telling the protagonist their plan because they got him captured. Ha <laughs> ha, you run just into my trap. He's supposed to hit Jolie, who because he's already breaking, there is nobody in front of Jolie, except the corner that's being blocked by um, Wesley Grimes or being run out of play by Wesley Grimes. Maybe this safety that has the second deep fourth can run him down, but he's got a lot of room to go. Unfortunately, Grayson McCall made his mind up that this was the read. Now, here's the thing. This frame that's currently on the screen, for those of you who are listening and not watching, is where the ball is relative to the defender and relative to the two defenders because the cornerback who was over Jolie has jumped the route because that's why you're supposed to sit down because the curl out guy, that ball will be right in his lap if you throw it outside or, or he'll be, in essence, going into a hospital ball, which, again, that's kind of what Grayson McCall threw because even if, KC catches that. That corner has been breaking on that ball for quite some time. And we all know that force equals mass times velocity. And that young man, although he may not be the biggest, has picked up quite a bit of velocity on the way downhill. So much so, he wasn't even prepared to catch this ball. He let it hit him in the chest and grabbed it from there. Now, why am I talking about this? And what am I, what's the point here? I want to take you back to this slide where we have the offensive concept against the defensive concept and this original slide that shows the two safeties deep. I don't think our offense has to be perfect to score against Tennessee. But what I do know, this isn't what I think. This is what I know. Our quarterback cannot misdiagnose the coverage at pre-snap. And maybe he didn't misdiagnose it. Maybe he diagnosed it properly. The ball just got away from him. So I'll give him credit for that when him say that one might not be a mistake. 
but he cannot be so locked on a receiver that he is just like, regardless of what happens, I'm going to this guy in this moment. It's not desperation time. Why are you locked on to it has to go here? That's not necessary because if you come off one and go to your second read, Jolie is right there, wide open, because this young man broke on. He, he took the cheese. He took the bait. So the quarterback cannot make that wrong decision and throw the ball outside, which then turns Justin Jolie into a linebacker. Hey, Tony Gibson. Hey. <laughs> hey, listen. They're running Travis Hunter both ways. You know what? Never mind. We ain't, we ain't got to do all that. I, you know, I, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad if I saw Justin get out there and slam Sam a little bit. But in all seriousness, um, this is a play where you cannot compound mistakes. Even if we say, you know, the pre-snap read thing is completely out the window, um, that's speculation, sure. We can just go with you made the be- the wrong read and you threw it wide. You cannot do that against Tennessee or else there's going to be a lot of celebrating and there's going to be a lot of moonshine rolling in Knoxville. That was our Locked On Look of the Week for Week 1. Kenton, thank you as always for throwing that together. It's always great to learn just a little bit more about what you're actually watching. It just helps to conceptualize some of the mismatches and some of the plays, where they went right and somewhere, and sometimes where they also went wrong. So we love putting this on for y'all each and every week during the football season. That will do it for us here on Wednesday. Be sure to check in with us tomorrow on Thursday. We have a crossover episode with Eric Kane of Locked On Balls. Great episode. Make sure you don't miss that. Get to hear from both sides ahead of this big matchup coming up on Saturday. Make sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments down in the comment box. Tell us what you think about the Tennessee offense and Nico leading the charge at quarterback. And tell us what you think about James Pierce and the Tennessee defense. Will they be too much for the offensive line to handle? Let us know. Mash that subscribe button if you have not already. And we will see you right back here tomorrow on Thursday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.